Weed is green for go. Hey there, beautiful people. And it's that time again. Good news report. The final report for a year filled with, well, what a lot of you may say or would call not so good news. So let me do my best to fill you in on some of the good news that has happened to help lift your mood and remind you that there is good out there in spite of what the mainstream media may tell you because, well, they love to focus on all the bad. According to them, it's all bad because that's pretty much all you ever see. So remember this really important and truthful fact. If you focus on all the bad, well, unsurprisingly, that is all you will ever see. But align yourself with some of the good. And guess what? You see more of it because there is plenty of good out there. So let's get straight to it. The United Nations has officially recognized cannabis as medicine. And soon after that, Mexico voted to legalize the cannabis market. And then cannabis legalization was approved by the U.S. House of Representatives. It's sweeping the world. There is a wave of green. Green as in the plant itself. And then, of course, the color, which represents go. So finally, there seems to be a wave of legalization of can cannabis in various forms. You know, whether it's for medicinal or recreational purposes. This is happening throughout the world. Finally, I mean, I even recently read an article that was titled San Francisco bans smoking inside apartments unless it's weed. <laughs> oh man, you know, there's obviously a lot of nuance to this article, but I mean, the point I'm trying to make is weed is green for go. Let's keep bringing in the good news for 2020, I hear you say. And what do I say? With pleasure. Therefore, your second bit of good news, well, it's kind of two bits of good news in the second bit of good news. And these are stories, or at least examples, of acts of kindness, where people generously just help and support others. It's the act of gifting, something I myself have recently gotten into, and I find it to be such a powerful, beautiful, and a magical thing. So let's get straight to the stories. So first example of this was a story from Florida in the US, where a man casually said he would give his old car away, which was mostly driven by his grandmother, but it was in great shape for a 24-year-old car. And of course, he got countless of requests, obviously. And then, having shifted, shifted, sifted, sorry, that's what I'm looking for, having sifted through countless of the requests, he decided to gift it to a 31-year-old substitute teacher named Mark Selby who'd been in an accident, and his car was, was, well, it was wrecked, and he was living in his mom's home while recovering from his injuries. And then, kind of like paying it forward, or maybe the whole idea that gifting and giving is contagious, enter another amazing human being who, hearing about this kind gesture, decided to give 400 bucks into the car's glove compartment to help Mark Selby pay for the registration and the incidentals. Now I know, this might sound like a pretty basic, everyday, in your neighborhood kind of good news story. But how often do you hear these kind of stories? How often do you even read about these kind of stories? You could be the person that makes these kind of stories happen. Second story of kindness and gifting. Here's the title, and this should give it away straight away. This should give you exactly the idea of why it's so important to gift and why it feels so good to do so. Here's the title. Mom pays for multiple strangers' groceries. I just wanted to bring smiles to people's faces, she said. Ah! Love it. On a whim, the mother of three, a mother of three, laid out $600 of her own hard-earned cash to produce, or rather to purchase groceries for eight people that she'd never met. <sighs> it's Christmas time, people. It's the time of giving. But, you know, I hope that we can end off this year with one of kindness, with one of giving, supporting, and love. Not with the one that everyone sees 2020 to be, 
you know, disaster, terror, fear. Let's end it off in, in a space of love and gifting. And let's start 2021 in the same way. In, in a way in which we want to just focus on how much we can help others, how much we can give, how much we can contribute to the world and maintain the same kind of kindness, this gifting unconditionally for the remainder of 2021 as well. Which is why, unsurprisingly, for my final story, it's based on a poll. Because of the negative nature of 2021, they conducted a few surveys and a few polls. Of course, many of these are conducted in America, and these are no different. Many Americans, and I'm sure the rest of the world as well, they have identified countless ways in which people wish to do good. How they've identified and they've realized that 2020 has highlighted the importance of community, of helping out and of doing good. 38% of those people surveyed mentioned they'd donated to local charities to foster positivity. And 28% are finding a safe way to volunteer. In another survey, 66% of people were in agreement that their communities are closer than ever before. 78% of respondents also said the pandemic has made it more important than ever to give back to their local communities. And as respondents look to the new year, three quarters, so what's that, 75%? Yeah, 75% are hoping to start off fresh and share positivity as much as they can with another eight in 10 people hoping that others will do the same. And that's why I'm doing this here, spreading the good news, the love, the fun, the smiles, and to remind you to do the same. You can, however, wherever, whenever, do something nice for someone, for anyone, for a stranger, for your community, for a loved one, whatever it is. Let's find the positive in this year, filled with countless challenges, and let's use the challenges to inspire us to find the good, because it is there. You just need to look for it, and maybe be it. So that's it for me, for your good news. Until we meet again, ciao for now.